Hey friends, welcome to a new video on my channel and first of all thank you for being here and watching this video because I think some of you are coming from reddit and because I made this animation, this final animation which I'm going to show you now how I made this animation because a lot of you asked me how I did this and I told you I'm going to make this video which is now a little bit late, sorry about that but the animation itself I posted the final render on reddit and instagram i think but i think most of you are coming from reddit because evidently it went viral on reddit okay so first of all thank you now i really am recording like several times now this um this tutorial because i got some artifacts and some problems while recording so uh, sorry for that that's why i'm really late but I hope you are still here and you're learning something, okay, on this journey. Okay, so first of all, how did I make this um, animation? First of all, okay, the cloth. The cloth, I didn't actually use Blender cloth because Blender cloth is actually garbage. In my opinion, it is not really that great because you get a lot of artifacts and even it is too slow in my opinion. You can't really change much while like processing like while baking you got some physics properties but all in all you have to like really hope it comes great out you can't play while baking for that problem i got another solution which is actually marvelous designer in my opinion that's the best tool for cloth you know a lot of i think film industries and even games are using this tool because really guys it is for me the best tool i've ever seen in my life first of all it is actually 30 days free, so you'll get a trial to test the, the, the tool, the program. Um, and even that, it's just amazing. So it is even worth to buy because it's great, okay? It's amazing. And you'll need it in your journey a lot of times if you're an 3D artist, okay? So first of all, of course, you can use that 30 days trial. And then if really it is good enough for you, you can make your own opinion about that. So first of all, I chose this 3d model which is actually free from cg trader because you know sculpting it and modeling itself it by, by by your head i mean it's possible but it would take too much time and i'm more i'm more a lazy guy <laughs> i'm more a lazy guy there are a lot of opportunities to build scenes you can make them by yourself but that would take too much time you know and it doesn't mean like if you are using some models it doesn't mean that it is quantity i mean they are here so we can use them and i think that shouldn't be a problem because i'm all an animation guy and every time modeling is by by yourself is actually very time consuming so you can download this model for free great guy by the way of course this is important so um, a lot of you ask me did i make the animation by myself with like a mocap or did i animate it really hand by hand and no actually no that would take too much time I used Maximo. I think a lot of you really know this site. It's great. So you can log in for free. It is actually free. Okay, so log in or sign up. So by the way, this won't be a beginner tutorial. So be aware of that. Okay, so first of all, I uploaded the, the character. So just download the character and click on upload character. That's why Maximo is so great because they auto rig your character and you don't have to really custom make it by by uh, by yourself we can use this character i have it here i have him actually here it takes some time because my network is kind of kind of trash now you will see this window is going to pull up auto rigger just click on next here you see just your character in the t-pose now we have this window where you have to place your markers here we have a reference image which we can use of course I'm going to place the chin Okay, you can of course change the symmetry, so if your character isn't symmetrical, which should, you can of course deactivate it and play with these settings, and of course, you can change the skeleton. Okay, so we can cl now click on next, and it's going to auto -rig. Okay, so now it's going to load, and here we have our character, so now you should look if there is any problems. If there aren't any problems, if, if the character is moving properly, the, the fingers everything then everything should be fine and you can click on next if there are some artifacts you have to go back and change some of these dots and place them right because then you made some mistakes of course you you, you don't have to use my character mix mode has also some great characters to use free okay so we can click on next and now here we have our character here of course you can use a lot of great characters in Mixmo, which are all free if you want you can use them so now you can click on animation and you can also here choose any animation you want there 
it's it's kind of cool to see that some separation. Um, yes. So if you want to like post on Instagram, you can of course tag me, and I will see the the, the final animation. Okay. So, but I used something like dancing. It was swing dancing. So I used swing dancing, and I think I used this. It was exactly this. And now you see how he shows his butt. There we have him. That was actually this animation. Of course, you can use every animation you want. Okay. Now let everything like that and click on download. And we can choose here our frames per second. Now here. It is, of course, fully your decision how much frames per second you want. If you want some s smooth animation, but fast animation, you can use 60 frames per second, which will really look great. If you want some cinematic look, and I wanted some cin cinematic look, actually, for my final animation, but then I changed the camera to fit perfectly for Instagram. So, I mean, 30 would be better. Of course, you can use also 24 if you want some cinematic look. And if you want some Instagram look, you can also, of course, use 24. So we can uh, choose with skin to export the skin with us and we're gonna click on download, okay? So now we are downloading the scene. Okay, so after we downloaded the scene, we can actually go into Blender and just click on file, import, and we can import the final animation, which is an FBX, uh, FBX file. If you forgot like me to delete everything here, just press Ctrl I and X and delete. Okay, so now here we have our character. What you see here is a way too big character so we have to scale him down because if he's too big then in marvelous he will be also too big okay we can actually just select the armature now here very important to, to know okay so the scale is dependent or the scale here influences your scale in marvelous in your final result so be aware of that okay so I actually tried several times to find out which scale is the best for my final result because I had a lot of problems while seeing, okay, is the jacket perfectly fitting with the character? The jacket looked too big, too short, and I couldn't really scale it in Marvelous down or up. That was quite impossible. And I didn't find actually any possible opportunity to do that. So you have to make it now here in Blender and see if it really fits in Marvelous. Perfect, okay? Scaling it really small like here like that even a little bit smaller and that should be that should be good enough like that okay and sometimes even smaller sometimes even sh uh, bigger i don't know you have to really see which which is which scale is the best because that's really really a problem uh, the only problem which i ran into so now here we have something we have to change because in marvelous or almost in every program if you want to make some cloth you have to be in a T-pose because we have to like fit him into the cloth, but that's only possible if he's in a T-pose, okay? So now here, the problem in Mixamo is they don't do that, so we have to do it by ourselves. How to do that is actually very simple. We can just, we have to like delay the actual animation, so it starts like on 15 or 20. That's your decision and that's actually really not relevant, but we can just type in G and for, no, we have to go on f uh, keyframe one and G14, so it is perfectly aligned on 15. So now here, nothing happens, and we have to give now this T pose. So how that works, actually very simple. We can go in front on one, press Control tab, very important, select the armature, not the character. So now we have to reset the final pose here. We can just click on pose, clear it in from, and click on all. So now he's like in the T pose, but we have Another thing to do, because in Marvelous they don't use this f this common conventional typos. They are actually using their own typos, which is actually both of these arms, and they are actually posed like 45 degrees down, like so. Okay, so we have to make that. How? Just click on Object Properties, click on Viewport Display, and click on In Front. Show In Front, so we can make it easier. So we see this armature, and we can select this left part. Click on R minus 45 and very important is to know you have to be in the front front mode because if you are not in the front mode i'm going to show you what happens the arm is going like it is going to change also on the z axis so if you type an r minus 45 you will see it changes also on the z axis which we don't want so just be in the front mode and just type an r minus 45 now you see he's perfectly aligned now also, the other side, just click on it and just click this time R45, okay? 
Now you can select all of this and you click on I and location and rotation. Boom, you'll see he's perfectly in T-pose and like really fade, it, it, it's going to fade into the final animation. Now we can press, press control and tab to go out of it. Very important, okay. Now, so here we have to actually apply the scale because why? If you won't do that, then in Marvelous, there's going to be a lot of problems because then your, your final animation, your character will be floating in the scene and this guy won't be like properly work. Just press on the character and click on Control A, all transforms and armature not, not, press not on scale because that will make him disappear. Just press on rotation. So now we are actually done. So we can actually just click on file. Oh, very important also change your keyframe value here. How long you're, you can click on your armature and see, see how you, how long your animation will be. Of course you can make it shorter, but in this case, 574. So just type 574. So now we can click on file, export, and here, very important, not FBX, select ABC, Alembic for Marvelous, because they use Alembic. We can save it everywhere we want. So place it where you want and click on export Alembic. After that, we can open up Marvelous Designer. Okay, so in Marvelous, first of all, if you stop the tool, the program, you will see I think a default character, which is actually a, a woman or a girl, just press on her and delete her, delete everything in the scene. I, I also have you the version 10, which is really powerful. You can download the latest version, 10, now it's 10, 10. Okay, we can click on file, import, Alembic. And here we can choose our place character. Okay, where you have saved your character, just import it. Animation. Here I imported already the character and you see the character is perfectly lined. So now very important, I forgot that. If you are, okay, importing your character. Now here, this window is going to pop up. Here we have some scales, okay? You can choose centimeters, millimeters, and meters. So now in my case, I had to actually select meters because when I selected centimeters, which was like in Marvelous, in the, in the previous version of Marvelous, Marvelous, I selected centimeters because Centimeters was like the perfect the perfect scale for my character. You have to look at the grid here, at the floor. If this floor is like really matching with your character, then it is perfectly aligned. In this case, I choose meters. I don't really know why. I really think it's like based on the final scale you do in Blender. And then you have to select like if I made him more smaller, I had to choose millimeter. I think. I don't know why now meters is like properly matching with the character. I don't know. Maybe they, they changed it. Maybe I did something something wrong. Really, now it is meters, which actually makes more sense for me because the, we are like we humans are an average one meter eighty. So actually, that makes way more sense. Okay. Also, just look that at one hundred and click on move garment to start position. So he's basically perfectly in the start position center, and the rest should be the same. Now you can click on OK, and that's why Marvelous is so great. We get a lot of free assets to use in Marvelous. We have to click here first of all in general. On garment, we have also your fabric and hanger and something like that. But we want garment because in garment there are all of these free cloth, clothes to use. Great thing in Marvelous. You can use every of them. I mean, I could give him a skirt or a dress, but in this case, I chose to give him this puffer jacket, which is great, and this pants. How does that now work in Marvelous? First of all, also you have to download these to use. Okay, so if you don't have the, if you don't see the puffer jacket and if you want to like use this jacket it is it was like here and you have to download it okay you can actually just press on it hold and just drag it on our character now here you can save your file i'm going to save it so it takes some time saving i don't know saving is like taking some time so we have to wait so now here we can click on proceed that's only if you have less than 10 gigabytes of memory space just click on proceed here we have our jacket okay there is a window this 2d pattern window is actually like a UV map. It is basically like the jacket, but it is like in, in different parts here. So this is the back, see it here. This is the front, and these are like the arm parts, okay? First of all, you see the jacket is like way too high in difference with the character. So we can actually just select all of this, press on it. And now if you don't have this gizmo, just click on settings, preferences. Gizmo and select world coordinate to change the, you have that right location, okay? So we can select all of this, press on it, and it's just position it like here. It doesn't have to be perfect, okay? It doesn't really have to be perfect. Just approximately like good, good enough for you. I mean, there is no perfect. So now you'll see 
it is clipping. What we have to do now is just select all of it and click on the puffer jacket and we have this blue axis, which is Z, and we can position it like in front of the character, almost in front, and you, you, you will notice now later why, okay? That's very interesting and marvelous and it is so powerful to see, trust me, okay? So just place it in the front, like in front of him, almost, and we can now select the back of it by just dragging. Oh, of course, sorry. I forgot to tell you how you can move. By right clicking, you can move here. It is different like in Blender. And with the middle mouse button, you can drag. And left button is like only for clicking. And yeah, there was it. Sorry. Of course, also in the window area here. And we can now select the back part. Click on it. And position it approximately here. Okay. So now the big problem. For me, also a big problem was the arms the arms i really had to look how i can fit them perfectly with his hands and even his arm and how i did that actually it was way way much simpler than i thought just don't select one 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 area of it that's going to bring some artifacts and problems okay if you do something like that just don't do that okay what you have to do is like really select both of these okay so all of it. Press on it and try to fit it really. You can even position it like at the top, bring it up and rotate it. That would be good enough, but of course you can position it a little bit more behind. Okay, so that would be good enough. Like that. So that should be a problem. Now, also here, just like both of these, not one part of it, both of these, okay? If you're not doing that, you will get some artifacts, like I said, some problems. We can rotate it. Yeah, I like that. That, that should be good enough. This shouldn't be a problem. Now that was it. Now you're thinking, okay, what, what does it mean now? So what we can do now? One of the most powerful things I, I've ever seen, we now ha only have to press the spacebar. And now watch this. Do you see that? Do you actually see that? And the most interesting part is you can actually in real time rotate. And after that, you can actually just drag these parts and change everything you want, okay? Everything you want can change. Now, perfect, okay? We can click again on the spacebar. And now the jacket fits perfectly with my character. How do we actually fit the pants under the jacket? That's, that's actually also very simple. We can just drag the pants on this character. And here, very important, just click on add because if you because if you click on open, it's going to open up a new scene or new project. So just click on add to add it to your current scene. And click on OK. Proceed. And I mean, it's also actually not that bad. But also here, drag it in the front. OK. I'm going to uh, pose it a little bit down, more down. That I can secure the back of it and position the back. The jacket itself is also clipping with this pad. How did I fix it? Just again, select the back part, okay? And position the back part behind the front part. Boom, and that's it. Really, nothing more guys, nothing more. Press play and watch what happens. Do <laughs> you actually see that? Oh my god, that's so powerful. That's actually so, so powerful. And that was actually it. I didn't do much more. That was actually it. So now, of course, we want to let the the, the cloth physics and uh, interact with the, the final animation. And how did I do that? actually very very simple now that's one of the new things in the latest version of marvel steiner 10 in simulation quality select here animation stable very important guys if you don't do that you'll make the animation obsolete and you'll get a lot of artifacts and mistakes now here just let everything like that just don't play with the settings it's great enough only here in play type you can also change this to real time to see what it looks like but you have to, you don't have to change that. And of course you can use your, uh, change your FPS, okay? So now what we have to like really do only, the only thing we have to do is we have to click here on record. 
just click on record and you see now all of this is basically interacting with our scene okay that the pants went down like it fell down i didn't actually pretend that to do this was actually by accident it was like a mis mistake but then i saw it looks kind of funny i used this and uh yeah i was happy so in this case if you really have some luck it's going to work i think it should work but if the pan stays like it is which i actually wanted then you have to use it i mean of course you can play a lot with these settings and see if it is what you want but i think that's what made it viral that the pants fell down i think you can also like stick it to the to the final character here we have a lot of settings you can pin it also i, I think but that's what i didn't do so it fell down I think also here will, will fall down, I hope, and I didn't do actually much more. So we'll see us if everything here is finished. Okay, friends, we are back. And first of all, I made a mistake. Please don't do that. I forgot to tell you that you have to like maximize your keyframes. So you get all of the animation, which I didn't do. So we can go here and type on something like 720. And that's why the animation looks garbage. So I forgot to tell you that. That's why it's clipping here. I didn't anim animate this part. I didn't bake this part. So just do that before you bake, okay? Otherwise you have to do it again. So here it is, we are actually done. I don't know if, yes, there it is. <laughs> like what I did, that should be it guys. That's actually what I did and you can, that worked like a charm. So we can actually just, I'm so I'm not going to bake it again. So it took way, way too much time. So we can just click on file now and export. And here, very important, choose Alembic Ogaba. Okay, so we export it in the white format. I don't know why, but we have to choose a Olympic file or gather. So I'm going to name it now YouTube tutorial and I'm going to click on save. Okay, so here I'll just select very important thick. Okay, very important select thick. So now we can click here on scale. Now here, very important select millimeters because Blender has another uh, scale system and we have to use here minimalist. Okay. So just click on OK. So it's going to export and that's and that's, that's going to take some time. OK, so now we exported the final animation. Very important to know also is be aware. So like I said, it is basically like the final result, which I have here now. There's a difference between my final animation and yours because the scale is a big, big point and the animation and like basically the, posi the positioning of your cloth and the, the overall scale, okay? So have that in your mind, very important. Now we can go into Blender. So here in Blender, I can just delete everything and I can click on File, Import, Alembic. And here I can just select my final animation. So now you'll see he's way, way too big, okay? So other than that, we can scale him, but we'll see there is not actually a character. Look how great that looks, guys. Look, first of all, how great that actually looks. It looks so phenomenal. I don't know what to tell you. Um, that's why model is so powerful, okay? How did I now place the character here with, with the cloth? Actually, very simple. We just have to import. I hope you didn't delete him. Uh, the character again. So import FBX. And we can just really, it has it ha really has to be the same which placed into Marvelous. And just we now we have to scale him down, uh, the, the final thing here down. Before we do that, select the final character and again, G14. We don't have to use this animation, which we made to like export it to Modelers. This, uh, this optimized one, we don't have to use this. This we can uh, use just this one. And now we can use this cloth and just scale it down. So in this case, if we are on 15, okay, perfectly on 15, we have to look now here, we can disable the armature and look if it's fitting, if it's not fitting, we can scale this down and up. And here it's perfectly aligned. I don't see any clipping. Oh, there is a little bit of clipping. I just can really, really, really little bit scale it down. I can also press shift while scaling. So it is fine, more fine, detailed, subtle. And that should be perfect. And now you'll see it is perfectly aligned. So if you, yes, there it is. So if you have some mistakes like the, make these, okay? So I noticed the first time I did this, I noticed a lot of, like a delay, okay? I noticed a delay and that's where it was like, again clipping and it wasn't matching. That was because in the 
render properties. Oh no, render properties, output properties. The frame rate was like 25. And we, and it, the frame rate has to be the same like your final export in or download in Nixmo. Very important and in Marvelous. So it has to be the same if it is like in 25, you see now, you see that? It's just going to change everything. It's just going to clip and don't, won't look there. So we select 24, go back, go here. It's perfectly aligned. If you've got these kind of problems, then you have to really just play with some of these settings. And even in some cases, some cases, you can also, if nothing seems to work, you can play a little bit with the frame offset if that's helping you. But in this case, you need to be like that. We can play also with this character. Okay, so if you have these kind of problems, which are also not really noticeable in the final animation, but if you have these kind of problems and you want to get rid of them, you can just, you know, play with the axis. And now you'll see. Okay, there we have also something we can go play a little bit with the Y axis. Again, press shift. Okay, so we have here again some problems. So I'm going to go back now, okay, and see if there is any problems. I mean, there could be a little, yeah, there could be a little problems. But in this case, in this case, just always play a little bit with the scale. I mean, they are really not that much noticeable in this case. Scaling them, scaling them is the only way to fix. Okay, that looks kind of nice. So yes, if you have kind of these problems, like I said, I mean, in this case, I, I, I if you place the camera, camera like, they, like this, which you should, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. You have to look what's uh, the best for you in this case. I think I had also some clipping, but it wasn't like that noticeable. So, yes. So that was actually it. This was actually the animation. So I'm going to show you now what I did in the... Uh, so I'm not going to show you like exactly one-to-one -one, uh, how to place everything. And it's kind of breakdown now, the, the environment. So it's, it's because it would take too much time. Okay. So, of course, I can make an extra tutorial on that if you want. Just type in some... Some feedback and a like i would really appreciate that so i'm going to open now the the final scene okay guys so now we are in the final scene which i made and first of all i actually looked up and yes there was some there was some clipping here so but it wasn't like noticeable so that should be a problem so be aware just don't play with the location values just play with the scale and look what fits there is a little bit of clipping but yeah, so uh, very important, don't play with the mesh itself. Just don't play with the cloth. Don't play with these kind of settings because if you do that, then there is going to be a lot of problems, okay? So everything should, uh, will look grotesque and um, that's not what we want. Before, okay, I forgot that actually we can go on frame one. How did I actually separate made different materials? Very simple. First of all, I gave it a material, material, went, in, went into edit mode, front mode one, very simple. We have to enable x-ray and then we can select just the bottom, like the pants and press control L. And that's going to select like basically all of the pants and we can assign it. And you can make a new material and just press control I to invert the selection. We have the, all of the jacket now and we can make a new material and assign that also. Okay, so very simple. I can show you now my shading of the jacket and the pants. It's actually very simple, it wasn't that hard. I used actually, first of all, principled, I lowered the pants, sorry, the pants. I had the roughness, gave it, some, gave it some sheen and gave it color ramp because I placed here a little bit of a little, a little texture, which is now gone, but I had a texture. That was like a fabric texture from uh, Bridge, which is free. If you have an Epic Games account, you can get some fabric texture. I used the lowest re uh, resolution. Oh, actually, no, sorry. It wasn't from it wasn't from, from Bridge. It is actually from textures.com, which is actually free. You can make a free account and you can just download from textures.com this, this free texture, which is the fabric texture, denim. If you look up for this name, you, you, you should find it. And I just placed mapping and texture code in it and lowered the value. So it was a little bit more dark and it was gray. Gave it a color ramp, crushed everything down, the white values. So it got some nice 
color and also placed the final thing here into a bump and then into the normal map so it gave me a little bit more details okay so it is pink because and white now here because the texture is now i think i bleeded i don't know so but in my final animation i have the texture and the jacket here actually also not that hard i just made it black okay completely black again here i had imperfections from bridge this one is actually from Quixel bridge and I used this imperfections so I get a little bit more realism and plucked that into invert which was actually a mistake because while I was recording one of the previous records I noticed that inverting it just like in, in uh, zero everything of it disappeared just don't do that I placed the math played a little bit with the color ramp crushed everything down and also played with the values so it was less show you that now less uh, yeah so everything of it wasn't like noticeable in the final shot because of the invert node here so if that was in on one that should it would be all visible so i didn't do that maybe you can do that and yeah learn from the mistakes because, mis because mistakes can sometimes be some presence and i of course used texture which is free from the internet and i just looked for some details with these these kind of things you can put the link in the description if, I, if i'll find that which is actually based on william so he made actually a tutorial of this kind of animation and how it works in modelist because i didn't know how it works he made a tutorial and also this texture was he's really great and i plugged this also into a bump to give it some bump into the normal and actually i can show you that now Give some give some details, you know, and that was actually it for overall the the cloth here. So basically, I was filling the environment, and for that, I was also using a lot of Patreon assets from William and Ian, absolute kings. I placed a lot of ground assets from Ian here. So these are actually just a little bit of ground assets I used. Really, I love these assets. They are so great. They fade perfectly in. There are photo scans, I think. You can make them by yourself or even download some. Quixel Bridge here. They also have some you can download free. There are also a lot of free ones on the internet, I think. But yeah, I placed some of these here. Then I placed a lot of trash. Some of these are from William. And of course here you can find a lot of these assets free on the internet. And also Quixel Bridge has a lot of these free trash assets everywhere like almost everywhere here on the ground seal, I placed a huge saturation value and played with the value to make it darker to fade a little bit more with the scene and placed, like I said, a lot of, a lot of uh, trash like this pizza and this also, I think. And yeah, that was it actually. And then here I placed from Quixel a little bit trash assets, mega uh, scans, all of these are photo scans. And very important, I noticed a little problem in Quixel while importing things or exporting things into Blender. You'll notice, you'll notice that all of the assets you're going to export and import into Blender, you're going to notice that they look weird. Why? I'm going to show you now why, okay? So, first of all, if you're going to look into the shader, okay, everything looks like, almost like that, okay? So, that's not how it should, but to fix it, it's actually very simple. You have to just just plug in every of these nodes in the right position because like the roughness like the gloss the roughness was in the specular i don't know why that's a bug in bridge so just place them in the right position okay so that's here and that's into the specular and that's into the normal map and click it down and click on roughness down then sh everything should be fine now i found in my opinion that the that that didn't look really that realistic and i don't know they was missing a lot of roughness so what i did actually i plugged the specular map into the invert factor so then it did look really great it was only like I, I did only plug the the specular map into the invert node only with the trash the rest of it i didn't do anything i just changed the values here after that i placed them into the C here everything here and there and I made a little bit look more filled and also I got some assets here from Ian, also from Ian. This cable is from Ian. He has some great assets. Yes, a little bit of trash. 
Now, here I got some graffitis, and these graffitis were like from William Landgren. Very important to know, you'll notice that in the, f in the, in the final animation, they were like clipping and bugging and something like that. So, uh, I don't know. I don't know why, but yeah, if I look here, I don't know why this problem appears, but I had, like I said, this problem. While important, like really placing them, it was really hard to place them because they were like clipping and every time I was changing the camera perspective and in the final animation they were also like a lot of times disappearing. Place a little bit of Quixel, uh, Quixel assets, then there was something. And also here, the building is actually image as a plane and I just placed a lot of loop cuts and extruded and beveled. This is actually the Ian tactic and it is so powerful. Really, it is so powerful. You have to watch some of Ian's tutorials to make this. It is actually not that hard, okay? I mean, it looks hard, but it isn't, actually. So after that, I also have this street here, which is this asphalt here, which was kinda, kinda annoying to do because I wanted these, like, these kind of streets with a little bit of more details and these kind of stripes i didn't find anything so i just made it by myself that looks like really a lot but it isn't so i didn't make it by myself actually it is just playing and seeing if it fits the best because i imported a lot of from Quixel asphalts and mixed them together to get a really good look here we have some grunge which i also got from ian and place it even on the street and also here on the building the same grunge some grunge with some hue saturation value and mix it together with this uh, image and also use the bomb to give it some some details you know in in the end i think i used a little bit too much also the street i use this kind of texture place like i said here this value mix it together with a lot of textures like this street here i thought it would give some details and or this it was giving me these uh, kind of stripes here also a little bit of more details here which i used and yeah that was actually i mean there could be a different way to do it an easier way but this way was which i used and then here i got a normal map which i placed which gave me some details and i used a noise texture even placed in a bump which gave me some um, extra details i think now not, not noticeable i don't know why i think i don't know so actually in the end i got something like that also i, I got some assets from ian some antennas 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 I, I don't know and i placed them here at the top because you will only notice them a background which is actually just the image from textures.com here you will see what texture this is it is actually an environment texture like hdri an image texture they also provide that with their HDRI, so I used this, which gave me a little bit nicer look than just playing with the sky settings here. And also it is way, way, way more better for your old world performance. I used this kind of asset, which is also from the ground assets from Ian. Really, they are so powerful. I played with the situation value and looked which value looks the best here. Did I miss something? Yes, I actually missed something. The sun, the sun was actually also the lighting, so lighting. So I actually use an HDRI, but this HDRI was like on point one. So it gave me some reflec reflections, but not the actual light. So I can show you actually what I mean. If I'll disable now the sun, you'll see the environment texture just gave me a little bit of re reflections, you know, especially for the, the object here and some of these kind of things. And then, uh, yeah, in my opinion, that's actually one of the best things to do to let a scene use an environment texture and a sun or area light. And then uh, I place the sun to like 10, made it a little bit, a little bit more yellow, gave it some ang angle. Also, I tried to use just like uh, trick here to get some shadows. I don't know. I, it didn't seem to work like uh, I noticed. Maybe it gave something. Now the most, the most important thing for me in my scene was the camera, also the lighting. But the camera was one of the most important things for me, because you know it. It isn't like only a, a camera. You know, a camera with the default settings in Blender. You know, if you import a camera, okay, so camera or the default camera which you get in Blender, then there is some settings okay which you can play with especially you can move by while moving the camera of course you can use 
this uh, keyframe keyframe option keyframe the camera and using even auto, key, auto keying and playing and using maybe a lot of settings to play with the camera movement okay so i thought i really want to like push it to the next level and what i did and in the end i really really think it um, it was worth i buy an app this app costs like five bucks it is nothing and what you can do with with this app is you can actually move your camera with your phone guys that is so freaking cool and powerful i use this app and i'm using it now every time because it is too powerful and it's so cool like you can just play the camera man and just really like how the camera really would be like you know in this kind of scenes so i played with the with my phone like connected it i will provide you the link in the, into the description and there are a lot of tutorials you can use uh, i won't make now total how really to install this app and to install it into blender and how to use it because that would take too much time yeah. import it and then see that what i made you see that that's like my actual iphone i used my actual iphone iphone and that really gave me that most of the realism i was hoping for yeah and i could really like move my camera and try to track my character like i was moving and yeah that was great it was so fun to make trust me of course if you don't want to pay, you can make it by yourself, just animating and looking like mm, approximately tracking this, this this guy with auto keying and placing some keyframes. And then you can use, of course, Camera Shakeify, which is free from, from uh, Ian. I think I made a tutorial on that uh, on my last video and you can give it some investigation or I don't know. And that will also look great. So now I also used actually panoramic. I didn't use perspective, which is the default setting. Because if you notice now, okay, I'm going to show you now something. If I going, if I'm going to choose now default like perspective. There won't be this bending here. There is a bending actually when you are filming with with a camera. There is a bending at the ed edges. In perspective, there isn't that. So I really wanted that realistic look, and then I pl just played with panoramic, and it gave me really that bending here which looked so freaking cool and realistic in the end i think i used a little bit too much but yeah so if you're doing that you can't play with the lens more than 15 i think and file of you field of view you have to just type in 360 because if you don't do that it's like on 180 and then you, you will see here some black uh, bars and yeah so just play with the field of view just set to 360 to get rid of these and also the lens it is only limited like 15 you can just type in more than that. and i think 45 or 40 would be way much better also it is only noticeable in the final render which i don't know why is like different in difference with the final render okay so if i click here yeah that was it also i used some depth of field of course uh used some pro lens from william so great this add-on which gave me some bouquet I don't know if it's not noticeable in these kind of scenes where the sun is there. I only think in some night scenes, uh, but I think overall it just, I don't know, it gives it, it gives it a way more nicer depth of field, you know, in my opinion. So I give it some distance, like where my character was, it was like here, and some f-stop. I didn't do something like point. 0.3 or 0.6 because then he would look way too small in, in the scene so i placed like 2.6 which is actually quite quite realistic that would be like your actual cameras to be or even smaller i don't know so yeah it doesn't have to be like perfect just approximately there's no perfect and some blades i blades i gave them 16 to because the, the other needs like 16 blades and to, um, ratio 2 to give them bouquet also i used this because the scene looked way too dark the strength was like 0.75 i enabled mist i'll tell you why now later so i used some motion blur and here now very interesting okay i used rolling shutter now rolling shutter i don't i didn't know that blender has that option actually and look guys that is actually a game changer because a rolling shutter is just a type of image capture in cameras that actually like in real cameras actually that records the frame line by line on an image sensor instead of capturing the entire frame all at once can create some distortions you know if you're filming fast moving subjects or playing your video camera across a scene you'll notice these kind of bendings and distortions which is in a real world 
if you would move like your camera really fast, it is way more like noticeable. It gave a little bit of distortions, which really looked great. Okay, so I didn't know that Blender has that option, but I used it and I will use it now every time. Just click on rolling shutter and choose top bottom. And the best option here is also something like 0.7, center on frame, 0.7 and 0.2. And these areas it will really look great. I rendered at 100 frames because I thought that looked kind of kind of enough for me in my case but that's actually that actually depends on your scene you have to look oh these are of course my camera settings i used 3080 and 1300 because i wanted to upload it to instagram and framework 24 i set the frame start to 15 to like get rid of the beginning where he was in a t-pose here comes a very interesting part here i used open exr why? Because then you can actually just import everything like miss the light information and something like that into your programs like After Effects or, or DaVinci and have a way, way more bigger space in compositing and post-processing because that really is a game changer. Also, it's going to render way more faster than using a, P a PNG. You don't have to do that, but of course, recommend it if you want to learn more about that because you know, now I'm not going to show you how I made the compositing that would take way too much time. If you want that, you can of course leave a like. I will show you how I did the final compositing and post-processing. That's where my scene was really improving all in all. And yeah, I used OpenEXR multi-layer, RGBA, float full, zip looseless, and just rendered my scene. It, it didn't take too much time. It took like, uh, I don't know, six, six, seven hours. I rendered on my old GPU 9070. That was it. Actually, guys, thank you all. I'm going to show you how I how the compositing changed in, in the video. You'll, you'll, you'll see it now. And I'm really, really, really now done, actually. I really... To record this video, it was like... I hope the video records properly, recorded properly, and there isn't any mistakes, but... It was really a pain and I can't really speak now more English. My English is now gone. I really am speaking a lot of, I am speaking now with a lot of problems, you know. But I hope really that this video helped you, you know. I tried my best. I hope I didn't forget, forget anything when I did. Leave a like, uh, leave a comment. I'll help you if you have some problems. I'll help you. Leave a like, subscribe. I would really appreciate that. And thank you guys. Ciao.